very warm welcome to the Amersham Methodist Circuit YouTube channel and to this time of worship for Sunday the 18th of September. We are of course still in a time of mourning as we wait for the funeral of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II which will take place on Monday tomorrow. And so we bring into our service this morning all our thoughts and feelings around the death of our late Queen. Every week she would go to worship whenever she could and so it is good that we are worshipping today. We turn in Singing the Faith to number 545, a hymn of vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. And now let us pray. 
let us pray to God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, who knows us each, who knows us in our differing gifts, who knows us better than we know ourselves. Let us pray to Jesus, God's Son, who stepped into our world and demonstrated that God knows what it is to be a human being, who lived our life, died our death, and yet rose again triumphant. And let us pray to God, the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, more shrewd than the shrewdest person could be, more caring than the one who shows most love. The Holy Spirit, who draws close to us, is within us and walks beside us. So let us make our prayers to God the Father, in the name of Jesus the Son, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and let us bring all our gladness, our joy and our worship, in Jesus' name. Amen. And a prayer of confession. For the occasions when we do not think as well as we should before acting. For those times when our choices lack discernment. For all the ways in which we fall short of your expectations for us, we ask to be forgiven, to hear again the words that you, Lord Jesus, declare to all who come in faith, saying, Your sins are forgiven. Amen. And a prayer for today. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you, such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In a moment we're going to sing the hymn 645, which is a great hymn of tenacity, and holding on to faith will your anchor hold in the storms of life. Following the hymn, we're going to have our two readings from the first letter of Timothy and the one we're going to concentrate on from Luke's Gospel. I guess the Luke reading could be headed being shrewd. And then following the readings, we will have our sermon.
the first epistle to Timothy, chapter 2, beginning to read at the first verse. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, beginning to read at the first verse. Then Jesus said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an account of your management because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So, summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly and make it fifty. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager, because he had acted shrewdly, for the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, Make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that, when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Let's start with the news. The lowest level of unemployment since 1974. Yet, there are still three million people out of work and we are led to believe there are lots of jobs where the um, employers are finding it really hard to fill vacancies. Now, there are all sorts of complicated issues going on. And into this complication, we take this story from Luke. 
The story that Jesus tells in Luke 16 is about someone who's going to lose his job. And he knows that he has been dishonest. He knows he's been on the fiddle. He knows what his master will do when he finds out. Simply put, that he will be out of a job. He is equally well aware of how little he is able to do in other areas. Look at the first few verses from that reading. I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. Then he hits on a master plan. A plan that will make sure that for him, when he loses his job, it won't be the end. So he gets hold of a few of the people who owe his master money and resizes their debts. How much do you owe? 800 gal ga gallons of olive oil? Quick, write down 400 instead. 1,000 bushels of wheat? Let's call it 800 instead. So that when he gets the order of the boot, these people will welcome him into their houses. In short, we have a dishonest man dealing with his dishonest mates to do a dishonest thing, i.e. to cook the books. And then we find his actions commended. At which point we have to be clear. First, what is not being commended. His dishonesty is not being commended at all. His giving away of his master's assets is not being commended. He is described at verse 8 as being of the light rather than, uh, of the dark rather than of the light. Um, that's the literal translation. Here we have a dishonest manager, a would-be steward of unrighteousness, a wrongdoer. So, what he is being commended for by his master is the way he read the signs, the way he saw what was going to happen and adapted to the new future. He showed insight in his unrighteousness. He was shrewd in his own dishonest way. The point then is clear and it's twofold. If this manager in his unrighteous self-centered way can adapt to the future with those like him, how much more should those that Luke calls people of light adapt to their new future? It's about being shrewd. And that we should be shrewd if we're serious about doing what Luke calls walking in the light. So the parable is about being shrewd, adapting to a new future, rather than about money. What then of being shrewd about making a right, a correct response to Christ, our master, who has given us so much? The first point, generosity, with what we have. We should share what we have, make friends. Verse 9, so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into the eternal dwelling. Second, moving to verse 13, single-mindedness. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to the one. And, and despise the other. 
Third, if going to adapt and move forward in a new situation, it needs to be on the basis of being honest and trustworthy in every situation. As we continue, be honest and trustworthy. Friends will trust us more. We will be easier to help. And as we continue to be honest and trustworthy with God, so more of his generous love and nature will be revealed in us. So as we move forward as Christians, we can take these three things with us and apply them. Shrewdness, adaptability, and being honest and trustworthy. Back to the recent news, the cost of living crisis and all that goes with it. I'm not about to make a political judgment, but as Christians, we need to face the situation honestly, looking at the causes at what maybe could have been done better. Looking at what we should do. The best way forward for us as individuals, for our churches. Perhaps thinking of providing warm spaces. It's true in our own life, as well as in the life of the church. And as I found myself, as I'm sure we all have, thinking about Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. She was shrewd. She knew when to do the right thing. She took advice and we're told she also gave it. The importance of little things, handshakes or visits have been seen to be so great and to have had so much meaning. Who could fail to be moved than Sinn Féin being present at the visit King Charles played, paid to Northern Ireland this week? That's a fantastic shift and it's down to the adaptability, the honesty and the shrewdness of our late Queen. Amen. In order to prepare us for our prayers of intercession, we use song number 668. Teach me, my God and King, in all things thee to see. Foremost in our prayers today, 
We continue to pray for the royal family, for children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren who get used to the loss of a much-loved great-grandmother, grandmother and mother. We pray for them and that the funeral on Monday will go as well as it can, smoothly and without interruption. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our new Prime Minister, whose first few days in office are probably not at all what she imagined. And we thank you for the work she has put in and for her presence most welcomed at various events around the country. And so we pray for Liz Truss, for her government, for wisdom and for discernment, that they will be shrewd in this most difficult situation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Although we are taken up with events in our own country and a change of head of state, we continue to remember the rest of the world. The Ukraine. The Yemen. The hungry, the frightened, the starving. And we hold them in our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring before you all those who have died, particularly those who have died in Christian faith. And we pray that in the fullness of time, you will bring us with Elizabeth, our Queen, and all the faithful into the house and gate of heaven, where you are to be found. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we make all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who gave us a prayer to use together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. At times like this, we are pleased to be able to rely on God as people of faith. Our closing hymn this morning is a reminder that we can rely on God. 132, O oh God, our help in ages past. Oh 
Now may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all today and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.